is New Year's 1966, and I'm here at the East London Circuit in South Africa, Eastern South Africa, right on the beach, uh, for the second of my 1966 playthrough on uh, the first round in 1966. This is the South African Grand Prix, back to where it all began uh, one season prior for Richie Axelson, at least in what we've seen. Uh, and this is uh, the South African Grand Prix, but it's not an official F1 championship race, unlike the prior season uh, where East London did host a championship points awarding race and uh, similar to next season, 1967, which will be at Kyle Ami for points. 1966, there was no points paying uh, South African race that year. From what I can understand and from what I've read, uh, some of the European teams were not happy about having to travel all the way uh, to South Africa, especially because of the big rule changes for the 1966 season uh, and the engine changes, which we'll talk more about uh, in a second. But it's the first year of that three liter format and some of the teams, I think, namely Ferrari, didn't want to go all the way to uh, South Africa. So uh, this race had already been planned. It was a race that was run um, with a lot of competitors in it, you know, nearly a full field, although some of the main teams are missing and, and filled in with some more local drivers. Uh, but it was a very competitive race and quite an interesting one. The real race was won by Mike Spence uh, driving for Lotus. Notably, Jim Clark did not make the trip down to South Africa uh, for New Year's. I think he wanted maybe a few more days off before he started racing uh, in 1966. So Mike Spence headed up the Lotus team and they did come down to test their cars uh, with the Lotus 33 and he, he did take the win uh, from Joe Siffer. But that doesn't really tell the full story. Uh, the big news of this race is Jack Brabham showed up with his BT-19 a new chassis and a, a V8 3 liter Repco engine. And so it was the first race where uh, a full three liter car was being run in a formula spec race. Uh, and he's a little bit quicker than the rest of us. Uh, you'll see in a second, but still driving some of his older cars. Denny Holm raced in this race, uh, driving one of the older uh, engines as well. So uh, a little out of date, but it's, it's that progression of uh, technology that makes Formula One unique. And it's definitely on display uh, here today. So we'll take a look at the circuit, the East London Grand Prix circuit. It's a track that's still there today. Uh, and it's right on the beach in East London, Southeast uh, Africa. And uh, it's an interesting track. It's all flat, pancake flat. It's got a, a few short uh, back and forth corners in the middle and then punctuated by these long straightaways and hairpins at, at either side with the Cocobana curve and Beacon Bend rounding out. Uh, Potter's Pass is a high risk corner as well. Uh, and these cars get a downshift, at least I downshift to fourth and glided on through, but easy to run wide uh, through there. Um, overall, this race in real life was run 60 laps, so a little shorter than a full Grand Prix would be. I'll be running 18 laps today, part of the long distance season we're doing. Um, we'll take a quick look here at the starting grid, and you'll see on the pole, Jack Brabham with a 126 flat. Uh, and if you note the rest of the field, we're all a little bit behind uh, Sir Jack there. Richie Axelson, I'm starting in second spot, so pretty quick, just a little quicker than third, uh, but over a second, almost a second and a half behind Jack Brabham. So that new engine, it's a lot more horsepower than my 2.5 liter Climax. But Mike Spence, uh, who was the real winner, as I said, starting right behind me, or right next to me, really, uh, in third spot. Some local talent in this one, John Love again, uh, making making his return back. Peter De Klerk not doing as well as he did uh, in that first round at Kyle Ami, but or the first race I did in Kyle Ami, the Rand Grand Prix, but uh, in the race as well. Uh, and a few other drivers, Arundel driving for Lotus, Joe Siffert, uh, Richie Ginter's here. Uh, so it's a good field, a few more drivers than I had in the last Grand Prix making the trip down here to South Africa. There's some more interesting racing uh, starting up soon, but everybody's gearing up for the 1966 F1 season. Uh, taking a quick stroll through the garage again, no major changes make sure I have enough fuel in here. Eight gallons actually might up that a little bit. It's more fuel than I'll need, but it would be bad to run out towards the end of the race. Uh, and ramp bagels, of course, to help turn the car. So nothing major on the setup. It should be an interesting race. I'm wondering, uh, I think the real battle is gonna be for second place. Uh, but in real life, Jack Brabham had that high powered car and had some mechanical tr troubles about two thirds through the race and had to retire. So who knows, it's an unproven engine and Jack today could uh, could run into issues himself. Uh, but without further ado, why don't we get started with this South African Grand Prix 1966. 
So here I am on the grid. Got a clear track in front, so this will be hopefully a good start. There's Mike Spence to my left. Flag is up, down, and we're underway. Trying to get a good start off the line. So we'll come down towards T1, and there goes Jack Brabham up the inside, but getting away all right. He's got much more grunt in that car, though. So we'll come into the first corner. It's a little tentative coming in here in the opening lap. But now sweep down. We'll head towards the Cocabana curve. A little kink here in the straightaway, nothing major. But then coming down to Cocabana for the first time. Whoa, Mike Spence diving up the inside. I saw him in the mirrors. Thought he was going to go left, then went right. So Mike Spence and the Lotus getting by, running a little wide on the exit. Trying to settle back in. I got a couple cars up the inside there. Now we'll come to the slower section of the circuit, down to first gear. Oh, just sliding the car in, lots of slip, late braking. So I got off the line good, but then everybody said, wait a second. Try to see if I can pull a little bit of a gap on the cars behind. Snuck in behind Mike Spence now. So we'll come to Big Ben last corner of the circuit. Down a first gear, just roll it on through. And come complete that first lap. So I got a really good start off the line. Let's see if I can slipstream Spence here. Brabham is, is already dipping out in front of us. Not gonna try to go up the inside of Spence here in the first corner, but down a fourth gear. Whoa, running a little wider than I'd like there. Hard to spot the entry when you're snuck up behind somebody. Coming up then on Spence. I see if going into Cocopan I can do the same thing he did on me. Oh, he breaks very late. Just trying to get that car slowed down. Don't want to try to pass into this kink, but this slower section could be a passing opportunity. I think the best one is into Cocabana there. Keep it in second gear. Car still, like I said, at Kyalami. Doesn't have a ton of power yet, so still pretty easy to apply the throttle. So completing another lap, take a look at the pit board. So P3 with 16 laps to go. Seems like might be checking out on the folks behind me. We'll come into the first corner, try to do a better entry this time. Stick right on the back of Spence. Hard on the throttle once you hit the apex there. Oh, try to jump up the inside of him. We gotta go through this kink. Oh, Kind of scary to go through there too. I've been able to make the pass. We'll come down to Cocabana. Oh, he's gonna come up the inside again. Running a little deep. Oh, Spence squeezing me to the outside. So this battle for best of the rest between Axelson and Mike Spence. I feel like I could actually jump up the inside there. He ran a little bit wide. Oh, getting a good run coming to the final corner. Ducking out quite early, but alongside into the braking zone. Oh, Mike able to help brake me a bit. coming towards the line. If I can get around him before the kink, that would be optimal. But I don't really want to go side by side through here. I think alongside Spence, go down to fourth gear. Oh, getting, running wide out of the grass. Somehow, 
not spinning out. So I'll try to bring it back to the circuit. Looking in my mirror, I can see a string of cars here. He's gonna try to come up the inside and take advantage. I think that's Arundel and the other Lotus come down to Cocobana. Oh, so making a pretty big mistake there. So easy to do that. The line is actually quite precise. Arundel able to get by me. I'm trying to come back up the inside of him. Locking up the brakes a bit, gonna run a little wide, but had to get a late entry. Oh, and Arundel, no, he's gonna think better of it. It's right on the grass again. Some sloppy driving here from Axelson. Gonna gather it back up though. So, as far as mistakes go, that one, high risk, but able to get away with it, and I would say that was a success. So, pulled out a little bit now, I can't quite see Arundel in my mirrors, but just out of slipstreaming distance from Spence in front of me, trying to get the kink right, or this big corner right, this time through. Not many times you can run wide there and actually save the car, it's often a uh, death sentence. Then we'll come down to Cocobana. I think I'm much quicker than Spence, but when he's with me, he's got that slipstream behind me. Down to first, taking a bad entry there. right up to the edge of the track. Pulled in quite a bit here on Spence this lap. Should be well within the slipstreaming distance now. But where to pass? He seems to be really good in the braking zones. So P3 with 13 laps to go. Down into fourth for the first corner. Slip streaming hard on him. Whoa. Getting up the inside of Spence then. I gotta try to maybe keep the aggressive line coming into Cocobana. He's gonna come up the outside though. Oh, but he runs a little wide. He outbroke himself there as I'll squeeze him like he did me to the edge of the circuit and able to get around Spence for a second. need to try to get through this section cleanly. Oh, the second gear there. First is better. Slide the car here through this corner. Still can get a little bit of on power over steer, but... So making it by Spence to the final corner of the lap. I think I've pulled a slight gap on him now. Running a little wide, trying to maximize the exit. Pull out of the dirt a little bit. Alright. So making a pass on that lap, I think I should be able to pull away from him. He's a little further back. Just trying to get my first corner right here. This corner would be a no-brainer with wings on the cars, but as the cars are, it's so tricky, those high speed, especially corners without any camber or anything in them. Down to first gear, oh, Spence closing up behind me there. Just see that number one in my mirror. Normally Jim Clark could be driving that car, but he took the day off today. Just one final hurrah before he heads off to Australia, New Zealand. Oh, a little fast here. Into the slow bits, onto the dirt. 
running through the dirt, almost hitting a marshal. Oh, but staying in front of Spence. More excursions than I would like on this. This circuit's much, I would say it's more tricky than Kailami. Just how flat it is. Not a lot of reference to go off of. Try to grab the curb there in the final corner. Take a look at the pit board. It's nine seconds behind Brabham last lap by with 11 to go. You could just see him as I came over the start finish line, dipping through the through the corner, but he's got so much more horsepower. I think it'll be quite quite the challenge, if impossible, to uh, to catch him unaided. More just need to uh, clean up the driving a little bit. Spence coming again, a little slow that time through Cocabana. I love how there's a cafe off to the inside of that corner on the exit. That would be the place to sit and watch a race, absolutely. And on a day like today, I couldn't think of something much better to do than go watch a race on New Year's Day. Not possible where I live, but in South Africa, that's something you can do. So a cleaner lap that time around, but not, not as fast as I need to be. Spence behind me still holding on. it through the first corner. Gently through Cocabana. It's very easy to go wide, so I'm braking maybe a little, little harder than I should, running a little more conservatively. A second, oh, gonna run wide again. My god, running over the dirt. <laughs> that marshal need, needs to go find a tree to hide behind. Very precarious spot standing there. <sighs> Making it through again. So, what's that? Three off-track incident so far and still running, which is saying a lot for the 60s. So, nine laps to go. Brabham still pulling away. I'm, I'm doing nothing that would uh, result in me catching him, that's for sure. Well, I'm gonna run a little wide through the first corner, but able to keep it on the black stuff. a little deep into Cocabana. It's actually not such a bad line. It was a bad line. <laughs> Need to try to hit the apexes better. Slow in, fast out. This corner's been causing me trouble now, so try to give that marshal a break <laughs> down to first gear this time. Brave, brave boy standing out there with his flag. The fans on the side of the circuit have seen pictures from this event and I think the berms in this version of the circuit that separate the crowd are a little a little uh, better than reality was. In a lot of cases it seemed like there was just a patch of sand and then spectators, no fence or anything. The circuit, I'm not sure the Grand Prix Legends version here gives the best impression of what it looked like, although 
It's been spruced up a little bit, but uh, it really looks like it's right on the beach. And from one of the straightaways, you're kind of looking onto a beach. It's very, very uh, picturesque. Quite the place to race. So somehow, despite the sloppy driving, I'm leaving Spence in the dust a little bit. Just touching the dirt there. a bit wide. So the BT-11 is not being kind today. Either that or what's behind the steering wheel is just a little, a little behind the car. So coming to the line, we got seven laps to go. Brabham's 13 seconds ahead. I think all I could really hope is that some lap traffic may become a factor, although it's still a shorter grid. I think 15 or so cars took the green rather than the full 20. But if I'm able to stick in second and, and keep the car on the circuit, that will be somewhat of a win. Also, to finish this one, this is one of the races that I DNF'd out of last season with a blown engine in the Ferrari. So, the BT-11 should be a little more reliable with the uh, 2.5 liter Climax. As long as I don't over rev it. We're going to run a little wide there. Six laps to go. It's pulled out to 14 seconds. So I think the race is showing just how impressive it was, what he was able to build so quickly and show that we are absolutely ready for the 1966 season. And the results proved it. I don't want to get too ahead of myself, but obviously the Brabham's overall very quick in 66 and 67. And you have to believe that their preparation was part of it. We're well, going to run wide through Cocabana. You know, in this race, they only had one car ready for Jack. And although he did have the mechanical failure, he showed everybody. He led the race from the lead, just like he's doing here, and ran it pretty much all the way to the end. Just like 10 laps to go or, or something. Had a mechanical. Team's trying to get ready for the 66 season. McLaren is creating his own car, testing at Riverside currently with that. Dan Gurney should be making his own car. Ferrari, of course, trying to figure out what to do to get more power into their cars. It'll be a very evolutionary year as all the teams figure out how to get up to that power in the way that they do it.
finally hitting the apex at Cocabana there. It actually feels better to leave it in second here, but the engine braking does help slowing it down, and I think that's why I was running wide there for a few laps. Take a look at the pit board this time by. So, four laps to go, still P2. Did I close in? I'm not sure if I closed in a second on Brabham, if it was 16 or 14 before. I have to look the next time by, too. That'd be, that would be interesting. But if you're 15 seconds in the lead with just a few laps to go, you would absolutely back off, especially with a new engine like he has in the car. so slow uh, in a straight line especially because it does feel very good uh, that I've sorted out some of my driving here come then to the line with three more laps to go first corner there. The South African F1 scene or racing scene in general in the 60s was very interesting. They had their own full championship and this race usually would have been part of it or it was in later years, the race at East London. For 66 since it was supposed to be a world championship race, it really ended up being counted for nothing. Uh, and the South African F1 championship started shortly after this race concluded so the first really two races or I guess you know the one at the beginning of December there the Kailami and then this one at East London really were just another race to try out uh, try out your cars and then the actual championship kicked off uh, and it was a full championship I think something like eight to ten rounds with all local drivers mostly but pretty cool to see how Formula One was kind of a rule set in these days. Still from you know the very beginnings of Grand Prix racing, it was still much more like that than it is today where there were many different championships and ultimately the World Drivers Championship was the most important one. But you see here with Lotus coming down and obviously Brabham coming over from Australia, this was some important stuff as well. The other important thing to note is that the Australians were using this higher horsepower uh, engine formula as well. So you could say that Brabham, maybe McLaren being from New Zealand, they might have a bit of an advantage. We'll come here up to this tricky section. Ooh, don't want to spin the car out with so few laps remaining. Just touch the curbs there. So, no lap 
traffic to speak of. It seems like the distance today is, is not quite enough to catch the end of the pack. I think once we get to the full Grand Prix with the full field, so we'll certainly be some slower cars. We'll come to the line, I think, yeah, just one lap to go. Holding at 16 seconds, so either Jack's backed off a bit or once I've gotten my head out of the sand, I've been quick-ish. I'm sure he could push harder though. But handily beating now Mike Spence, Pete Arundel, and Denny Holm, who would have a similar car to myself. So a good showing, I think. Uh, not, not necessarily going to get the win here, but bodes well for future races. So through Cocobana for the last time. Through the kink, just let off early there. No need to push the car in this last lap. Weave it here through the S's. That would be a good spot to watch the cars. As long as you're not that Marshall on the inside. Slide it here through the second to last corner. And come up through Big Bend for the last time. Down to first gear. We're going to run wide, of course. Punctuating, almost spinning the car, getting back on the throttle, but punctuating this this race with a little bit of a hectic last lap. Coming across the line, finishing second here at South Africa in East London. Once I got my head out of the sand there, the car definitely uh, has some speed in it, but nothing like Jack Brabham there up front. An interesting circuit, if not an interesting race. Um, a little slow through the second half once I kept it on the track, but overall, not too bad. So we'll take a look at the final results. So Jack Brabham winning handily in his higher horsepower uh, BT, what is it, BT20? So definitely an evolution in car, just clearly by how quick he was. But Richie Axelson there finishing second position, so getting that silver trophy today. And on the podium, which is always exciting, uh, I think overall a good race for myself, um, knowing that I had a similar car to the folks behind me. So I was able to win the, uh, the Grand Prix within the Grand Prix. Uh, Mike Spence then in the Lotus finishing, rounding out the podium with John Love, the local, uh, Denny Holm, and Pete Arundel. So he lost a couple more positions to finish sixth, with which would be the points positions, obviously. Uh, and if you look at the bottom, Jack Brabham getting that fastest lap time, which is, of course, important as well if we uh, once we start collecting points. So overall, not the most interesting race for South Africa, but just another test session, really, to make sure that the cars are performing like we need them to. I could use a few more horsepower to catch Jack. I think uh, Richie will be headed off to Australia next to uh, partake in some additional formula racing before the F1 season gets underway proper. But until then, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all again next time.